want to continue my discussion of covariance and correlation. In the previous video, we looked at covariance and we also looked at perfect positive and perfect negative correlation. And in fact, I should note that I didn't actually draw the graphs correctly in the previous video because I, I left everything in this positive quadrant here. That is where A and B are both positive, but clearly A can be negative and B can be negative. So they could both be negative, in which case we'd be in this quadrant. Uh, here A is negative and B is positive. Here uh, A and B are both negative. So technically I should have drawn it this way. Um, when we think about correlation, we rarely get perfect positive or perfect negative correlation. We usually get positive but not perfect positive correlation or negative but not perfect negative correlation. What does that mean? Well, when you're plotting in AB space, you're going to get points. So for example, suppose this is a return for A and this is a return for B. And let's say on January 1st or, or January, let's say it's monthly data, January of 2000, um, A went up this amount, okay, this horizontal amount, B went up this amount. So we get a point. And perhaps in February, A went up a little more and B actually even went up a little more than, than A did. So we're up here somewhere. And we get a bunch of these points. Okay, Maybe we had some month here in April where they were both down. We may have a case where um, A was up, but B was down. So we get a bunch of points all over the place. And you can see there's a positive relationship. Where I to draw a line, the line would be upward sloping. So we're, we're to draw a line through these points, it would be upward sloping. And you'll notice that all the points don't lie on the line. This is the case where we have positive, but not perfect positive correlation. So this is the case where the correlation coefficient, and we use the, the uh, notation rho AB, is greater than 0, but less than plus 1. And similarly, for negative correlation, but not perfect negative, you'll have cases where there are a bunch of points, and they slope downward, okay, in general. So usually when B is high, A is low, and vice versa, and it slopes downward, but again, the points don't all lie on the line. There may be some points on the line but they don't all lie on the line. So this is the case where your correlation is less than zero, but greater than negative one. So let's see if we can do a calculation. So down here, I have three states of the world, recession, normal growth, and a boom period or high economic growth period. And the probabilities are 30% chance of recession, 40% chance of normal growth, and a 30% chance of a boom or high period of growth. And these probabilities should add up to one. In fact, the previous video I made, not, not part one, but I'm revising this video, someone noted that I made a mistake and that these probabilities did not add up to one. And so here, if we have a recession, A gets a 2% return, normal growth, 8%, and in that boom period, 14%. B, on the other hand, is just the opposite. Okay, During a recession, it goes up 14%. During a boom, it goes up 8%. I'm sorry, during normal growth, it goes up 8%. And during a boom period, it goes up 2%. Now, we'll find something special about this example, but they, they don't have to be exactly equal. I just did it this way. It'll save me time on the calculation. So you don't have to watch such a long video of me doing the same calculations over and over again. The first one thing we need to do is calculate the expected value of A and B. And it turns out, see, I did this by design. These are go both going to have the same expected return. There's a 30% chance 
that we're in um, the recession. And if we are, A has a 2% return, plus there's a 40% chance that we have normal growth. If that's the case, A has an 8% return, plus there's a 30% chance that we have a boom period, in which case A has a 14% return. And I drew this so it was symmetric, that this is right in the middle, and the probabilities are that it's the same weight in the boom period as it is in the recession, so I don't actually have to multiply these out. Okay, you can do that for yourself if you want to make sure I'm correct, but the expected return is 8%. And it's also the case for B. Now, in order to calculate the variance, we use the formula, and the variance for both of these is going to be the same as well. The variance for A is going to be the probability, or in the first state of the world, the recession, times the return that A gets minus the average return of 8 squared plus the probability we're in the normal growth period times the return that A gets in that state of the world which is 8 minus the expected return which is 8 squared plus the probability that we're in the boom period times the return that you get in that period minus, again, the average return or expected return squared. So if we work that out, this is minus 6 squared, right? And we can do that. It should be 36, right? Minus 6 squared, 36 times 0.3 is 10.8. Okay. This is going to be 0, because 8 minus 8 is 0. And then this is also going to be 6 squared, which is 36 times 0.3. So this is also going to be 10.8. To calculate the correlation, we need to calculate the covariance between A and B. And this is going to be exactly the same as the... As the um, variance of B. Okay, The standard deviation of this, and I'll use a notation sigma, sigma A is simply going to be the square root of 10.8 and we could do that calculation but it would actually be handier if we just leave it in that in that uh, form. Okay, The covariance between A and B, so the covariance between A and B is going to be equal to the probability we're in the recession state, the return that A gets minus its average value times the return that B gets minus its average value. B is going to have, let's see if I scroll up a little bit so you can see the data, 14 and it has the same average value, minus 8 plus 0 0.40 times 8 minus 8 times 8 minus 8 plus 0 0.30 14 minus 8 times 2 minus 8. So if we work that out, this is minus 6 times plus 6, so that's negative 36 times 0.3, so 36 negative times 0.3 is minus 10.8. This is going to be 0, and this is going to be the same thing. Plus 6 times minus 6, minus 36 times 0.3, minus 10.8. All right, so let's see what we have here. We have 
the correlation is going to be equal to the covariance of A, so correlation coefficient is equal to the covariance between A and B divided by the standard deviation of A times the standard deviation of B. All right, this here is going to be, well, let's multiply those together. There are two of these, so times two, we get minus 21.6, and so what do we have here? We have, I'm sorry, I made a mistake here. I have 10.8 and I have 10.8 squared, right? This should be, let me just correct that, that should be the square root of 21.6, right? I forgot to add the 10.8 plus the 10.8. That would be the variance. And if I wanted the standard deviation, I take the square root of it, 21.6. Okay, I was a little worried. I was looking at my numbers and they didn't look correct. Now let's look at it. Minus 21.6 divided by the square root of 21.6, that's the standard deviation of A. The standard deviation of B is also 21.6. The square root of 21.6 times the square root of 21.6 is just 21.6. So we get 21.6, negative 21.6 over 21.6. We get negative 1. So these, this is the case where they are perfectly negatively correlated. Now let's go back and look at the, the numbers here. It makes perfectly good sense. When A is going up by 6%, B is going down by 6%. When A is going down by 6%, B is going up by 6%. Now they don't have to be the same numbers, 2, 8, 14. This could be 2, 8, 14. This could be, uh, let's say, 10, 5, and 0, okay? Just as long as if you tell me how much A goes up, I can tell you exactly how much B goes up. They don't have to be the same numbers, okay? I did that because it made my calculations easier. But, you know, when you look at your calculations, or when you're looking at the numbers, look to see if they look negatively correlated. They're moving in opposite directions. If I had 2, 8, 14 and I had 6, 10, 12 here, you would see that they were positively correlated because when A was going up, B was going up. Here, when A goes up, B goes down. That's a negative correlation and it turns out that they are perfectly negatively correlated because they move exactly the same. Okay, You tell me how much A went up, I'll tell you exactly how much B went down.